to this Frankie Flowers live little broadcast where we're going to answer some garden Q&A. Normally, I do this uh, each and every week on Facebook from 9 to 9.30. Just want to make sure this is, uh, oh, there it's starting in just a few minutes there. Uh, so normally, I do this each and every week on uh, Facebook, of course. And with that, um, I answer your garden questions. Uh, this time, I'm trying things a little bit different. So I'm testing some things out. The reason why I'm doing it as well this evening versus uh, on the morning is that I did take today and the weekend off actually to be with my boys. So this is where I'm testing as well, broadcasting simultaneously on as well as YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, just to see how this can work out and see if people are out there watching and see how it works overall. Let me just refresh a page over here. Bear with me, guys. Oh, there we go. Happy Sunday, Car uh, Tanya. Look, let's give a little Tanya shout out there. Look. Here's happy Sunday from Tanya. She's giving me that on LinkedIn. So I know that we're on LinkedIn right now um, with that as well. So there's a little bit with Tanya saying hello as well. Make sure you guys say hello if you're going to be out there as well. Uh, I think we're working. Are we working on Facebook? I don't know. We'll have to see, but we're just going to go with this for right now and see how things work out overall. Uh, so once again, Frankie Flowers here. I'm here to answer any garden questions. If you want, talk a little bit about the world of gardening overall. Also talking a little bit about what's going to happen in terms of some snow. We do have uh, some snowfall warnings that are in place for the province of Ontario. And with that, it looks like we're going to see uh, some significant snowfall through the overnight period into tomorrow. Some of the heaviest snowfall through the Toronto area will be tomorrow morning during the morning hours as kids are going to be going back to in-class learning. It looks like Mother Nature is given the big bird. We'll have to see what happens and we'll see with those school bus cancellations. But it's a good thing that we do need to get some uh, snow load out there because right now we don't have any snow. And another thing that was just sent to me with some of the extreme cold, we had lots of cold conditions. I was in Dorset over the weekend. And with that through the weekend in Dorset, temperatures through the overnight dipped down to minus 40. The good news with that is that should actually help us with some gypsy moths. Some of the uh, colder temperatures, colder conditions can actually be something that's going to clean up and help us uh, get rid of many of the insects that are out there. And hopefully that uh, 2022 will not be the year of the gypsy moth. So we're just going to say a little shout out to Kevin there. He's saying hello too. Boom. Uh, happy Sunday to you as well. Uh, we're going to say a little shout out there to uh, Lorianne as well. Hello to you as well, guys. And Anna, hey, saying hello to you as well tonight uh, on this Sunday night. Uh, there we go. So, um, Let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the world uh, in terms of what you're maybe getting excited about, and that is seed starting. It doesn't matter where you're going right now. You can go to a garden center, you can go to your home improvement store, you can go to your grocery store, and you're starting to see seeds for sale. Uh, indeed, it's way too early, early, that is, to be starting seed starting, but it's not a bad idea to get out there and buy some seeds and really get what you want. But before you do so, it's like going to the grocery store. You don't go to the grocery store hungry. You actually go to the grocery store with, you know, something in mind. And that being in mind should indeed be what you're going to grow that year. So really you should take the time to really plan out your garden. If you're thinking about uh, growing vegetables for the first time, make sure that you actually take the time to plan out that space. Know that you have full sun and really schedule what you need. You can get lost in the seed racks and buy way too many seeds and kind of get things that really are not going to work out for you. So like going to the grocery store, go with the list. And with that list, make sure that you check it twice and really take the time to plan out that garden space. And if you don't have a big backyard, you know, you're not going to be growing pumpkins. If you have a small space, you're going to look for plants and food growing crops that are quite small in terms of the square footage they take up. And then you're also going to think about crop rotation, like for instance, radishes or something that we can sow early on. And after we harvest those, that space can be taken up by the tomato. That's going to get a little bit bigger there. Uh, here we go. So here's a question that we have. Uh, this is from uh, Teresa. She's saying, what do I get ready for seed starting inside? I have a three-tier planting shelf unit with lights. Is there anything special I should organize to be a better starter? So um, first off is timing. The key is, is we don't want to start our seeds too early. And when we go to the back of seed packets, we'll see that it will, it will tell you, you know, so four to six weeks before last frost date, six to 10 weeks before last frost date. It's really important to pay attention to those sow times. Those sow times are going to make sure that the plant material is ideally ready for when we're ready to plant it out in the garden. So really what we want to do is develop almost a seed starting schedule where we're going to be marking down all those sow dates we're going to be sowing things. 
And with that, it's great that you have that three-tiered system. Remember that plants, seeds, don't really need any light to germinate. All they need is humidity, heat, and moisture to germinate. Once they get to a three to five leaf stage, that's when you're starting to then introduce light to them. The three-tiered light system is fantastic, and you can also uh, make those lights hopefully raise and lower. As they start to sprout, you want them fairly low, and as the plants get taller, you're going to raise those lights a little bit longer. But the key is to be great at, sow at sowing your seeds, is to make sure that you're sowing them at the right time. Most people fail because they honestly don't sow them at the right time. So that's super key. And thanks for that question out there, uh, Teresa, by the way, as well. Um, a couple other things that are going on in my world, just to kind of update you guys as well. We still have that uh, chance for you to go to Floriad. Floriad is the garden tour that we're doing this summer, which is a, a riverboat cruise that's going to be happening from Switzerland. And then it cruises all the way up the Rhine into Amsterdam. That happens in July of 2022 with Emerald Cruises. Uh, I have details on my Facebook page. And as well, you can email me, frankie at frankieflowers.com. So if you want to email me at frankieflowers.com, I'm just going to refresh my Facebook feed over here to see if we have and see that we're up and running as well. Just curiosity. Yeah, we are. Beautiful. Beautiful. There we go. Uh, so things are working out for us here today too. Um, so once again, that Emerald Cruise Line, we have that going on. Uh, as well, what we have going on coming up in the next few weeks is you will be seeing a brand new Frankie Flowers website that we're updating and trying to get it going, uh, as well as there's going to be a lot of content that are on there. Last week, we talked a lot about bird feeding and birds uh, and feeding birds in the backyard. Uh, I'm going to continue to put content like that out there as well. Uh, so I'm just going to take a look here too. Okay, good. We got everything running and rolling here, which is great. Good evening, Frankie. Happy to start thinking about wonderful veggies. Good evening, Frankie. This is Marlene. Evening, Frankie, as well. So I'm seeing that in my feed over here. I just got to, sorry about this, guys. Just going to see what the chat is going on here. So it looks like the chat is not going as fast. There we go. Pete Sullivan saying to me, happy Sunday. Here we go with Pete. He's saying, happy Sunday. Hope at least no Mississauga is not too bad for the first day of school. Yeah. A lot of people are wondering about that. It, it does look like uh, we are going to see enough snow that will impact the drive tomorrow. Uh, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of an overlay as well in terms of breakfast television. If you're watching me for the first time, a little bit of my background. My name is Frank Vergini, a.k.a. Frankie Flowers from City TV's Breakfast Television. I wrote a total of four garden books. Uh, I'm also uh, a product of child labor, I often joke about. The reason for that is my family business is Bradford Greenhouse's Garden Gallery, located in Bradford and Barrie. Uh, my family are greenhouse growers, garden center operators. I also come from a family of farmers as well. So there's been a lot of hours of growing, a lot of mistakes as well in my life. Uh, and because of those mistakes in my life, that's why I share some of that information with you. Okay, we got Facebook over here, which is uh, actually show me lots of different things. Uh, this is Debbie Harris. I'm using grow lights. How many hours per day should I leave them on? So Debbie, what I need to know is exactly what you're growing. So generally when we're using the grow light, we're mimicking uh, daylight hours. And sometimes we're actually reducing the amount of light depending upon the plant you're growing because it could be uh, a daylight sensitive plant. So for instance, for marigolds, we'll actually reduce the amount of light to trigger marigolds more in the bloom. We'll do the same thing with fall mums. Knowing what type of plant material that you're growing will then tell us how long of the day that we want to light them. So if we're growing tomatoes and you're growing tomatoes indoors and you maybe want to grow a cherry tomato and you want that cherry tomato to grow indoors and you want to harvest it, you're going to be at least 12 hours on that cherry tomato. They have to be full spectrum lights. That's the key. If you're using an indoor light, you you know, I have my ring light on here to make my skin look a little bit nicer for you tonight. Uh, but if you're growing with indoor lights, you need a full spectrum light bulb that's going to mimic the sun overall. So it really depends. If you're thinking about growing food indoors, I really encourage you to either get an arrow garden or a click and grow. The arrow garden, which is by Scott's Miracle Grow, fantastic. It's uh, something that will actually do all the think work for you. All you have to do is add water, add seeds, put a little bit of nutrients when it tells you to do so, and you're going to be off and growing. Uh, this is from Kim. I moved my outdoor ferns from the summer into the garage in November. If I cut them right down to remove the brown leaves uh, after the frost, will they come back? Kim, I'd love to take a look at what they, uh, they look like because it sounds like they've kind of, if they're in the garage, number one, and they froze, 
that's really concerning. So most of the potted uh, ferns that you have outdoors are either going to be a Boston fern or a Kimberly queen fern. They're tropical ferns that cannot actually get too much of a cold weather. The cold weather will kill them. If they're completely brown right at this moment, they're in the garage and it's an unheated garage, I would tell you that uh, I don't think they're going to survive for you overall. So if you want to send me a picture, Frankie at FrankieFlowers.com. Frankie at FrankieFlowers.com. Uh, so let's see here. Hello from Wasaga Beach. This is Kimberly Harrison. Uh, hi from Aurelia. This is Lacey. Uh, so we got lots of people over there saying hello as well. What else do we got here for questions? Let's take a look what we got for questions and comments. There we go. Well, we have a question here as well about fungus gnats. So something that's quite often and that happens quite a bit overall are fungus gnats. Fungus gnats are what we see on our indoor plants. And those indoor plants, you know, anything that you have, like you'll often see me show my little anthurium. I'm pretty happy about that guy. Eh? Look at that. Three brand new blooms. Uh, I even got my uh, mother-in-law's tongue that's over here too, my snake plant. Um, but fungus gnats are what you generally see um, right by the soil. And right by the soil, they'll actually uh, look like almost like a fruit fly. And those fungus gnats, the reason why they're there, and I always like to break this down the reason why a fungus gnat is there is it's there because of moisture. So it needs a moist soil. It needs decay. So usually if some leaves have fallen there on the bottom, it needs decay. Uh, and with that, it's going to really be the perfect breeding ground for fungus gnats. So the first thing that we do for getting rid of fungus gnats is we get rid of the house that they like. So we cut back on the moisture. We allow the plants to dry out. We remove the decaying leaves, clean up all the leaves on the base. We can even put a little bit of sand over the top of that, like a little bit of play sand, sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon. The cinnamon will help. And then put some yellow sticky traps. The yellow sticky traps, the adults of the fungus nets will fly and stick on those sticky traps. And by sticking on the sticky traps, they're going to um, basically trap the adults so they can't lay any more eggs. And it will really help you reduce the amount of populations of fungus nets that you're going to have. So that is super, super key overall. I wonder why this stream, let me just take a look here, guys. Just gonna take a look over here, gonna go there. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, um, let's go back over here and see what we got going on in the world of Facebook today as well. Hi from Thunder Bay, says Joe, uh, Joe today. Hi Frankie, I have a bug question. I found mealy bugs on my oleander tree. I sprayed them with an indoor bug spray. How do I know I've got them all? Any tips? So mealy bug, of course, is um, it's number one, hard to control. We can use a bug be gone, like an insecticidal soap on mealybug, and you generally want to do a few applications. You won't get all full, complete control on the first application. Uh, you'll look and see if any of the leaves themselves, um, the reason why they call them mealybugs, they almost sometimes even have a little bit of a white coating over the top, almost like a white felt coating that looks like over the top. Um, even if you see the leaves are sticky thereafter, that's a good sign that you have some insects, but generally a few sprayings. The key is when we have one plant that has, uh, has insects and we go to treat that, we usually want to move that plant or move other plants away from it. So when we're spraying, we're not spreading that mealy bug to other plants. Uh, really kind of important. And if you have a plant that's really infected with mealy bug uh, or a plant that's really infected with white fly, sometimes you're better off just to discard that plant, get rid of it if it's not a big expenditure for you and get something new. It's not that I'm in the industry. It's just a way to kind of start clean overall. Uh, another thing, if you find that your indoor plants right now have dusty foliage and you're wondering, hey, I would love to do a leaf shine or to wash them, plants can really benefit from a shower. So if you were to put a bunch of your plants in your shower, turn the shower on and just wash all the foliage and that heat and humidity can be fantastic for them overall. So many people will take their plants to the shower. Did you know? Did you know? There you go. Uh, I have an amaryllis bulb, so Sherry, uh, that didn't do anything, flowered... Uh, following directions, nothing. Should I just let it dry out uh, and plant in summer? So this is the amaryllis bulb. So that amaryllis bulb, if it didn't bloom, but it did put up some foliage, meaning that it did put some leaves up, what's key about those leaves is those leaves themselves are what's building energy for the bulb. So if it has some leaves that are there, we want it to build energy back into the bulb. With an amaryllis bulb, we're only planting the bottom third, leaving the top two thirds exposed. We're putting a little bit of moisture in there as well. So with that, we really want to um, make sure um, that we're leaving the top moisture and that should spread that bulb. If by chance that bulb didn't sprout in that time, you on occasion, we can get a dud of a bulb. So maybe it's just a bad bulb. 
Uh, you could try to redo a replant and things like that. Uh, but often overall, I would probably invest in another bulb uh, because it, that bulb there, it should have at least put some leaves up overall. So happy Sunday evening from Mary at Collingwood. Stay safe and warm. This is from Susan. First time putting down uh, Diplodenia flowers inside for the winter. Put black garbage bag over them and hung them in the basement. Will they survive the winter to use again in the spring and summer? So you're speaking about generally what's done with uh, geraniums. Diplodenia, Diplodenia, hanging them and drying them. It's something that I've actually never experimented with. So I'd be curious to see how this works out for you. Uh, I would, to overwinter a, dip, a Diplodenia, I would just actually keep them in an area that has some bright light and keep them watered. Diplodenia is a nice tropical plant. They're often known as Rios. The Rios, super easy to overwinter, super easy to grow in the summer, but you don't need to dry them and hang them. Uh, it's something I've never tried, but I've seen some people that have spoken about it. So I'd be curious to see how that works out for you. Uh, spider mites on my gardenia, please help. Sometimes um, with spider mites, you do need a miticide. So there are some miticides available on the market. So what I would just do is go onto Google and take a look at some of the different miticides. Uh, with that, that would be really good. There are insecticides that take care of insects. Miticides take care of, uh, of mites. Pesticides, of course, are things that are used for cockroaches and earwigs and crazy stuff like that. So take a look at a, a friendly to use and or organic um, miticide would help you there. Uh, Frankie Flowers, Kathy, uh, are there any vegetables we can grow indoors here in Ontario without any special equipment? Um, there are some veggies that we can have some fun with that we can grow indoors. So we can actually take even the bottom of romaine, you know how you have that bottom little stem, you can actually take that little bottom stem and place it in the soil. It will re-sprout and by re-sprouting it, it'll put a few leaves out and it's just fun that you can harvest some of those leaves and they'll work out for you overall. The easiest thing as a vegetable that you can grow indoors are sprouts. Many different sprouts that are out there and sprouts really don't need much light or any light whatsoever because we're harvesting in them and using them when they're in the sprout form before they really need the light to support their leaves. So you're going to look at different sprouts and their sprouters. You can actually buy these little layers of sprouters. You can even do sprouts into um, a paper towel. So super easy for you as well. So think about doing sprouts. That would be great for you. Matthew Amos. Hey, buddy. Um, Sid, do, oh, so Matthew Amos wants to know, yes, indeed. Sid, which is my coworker on breakfast television, uh, did test positive with COVID. Uh, he's working remotely from home, uh, no symptoms. Uh, you know, really great that the vaccine's really kind of kicking in and helping him as well as Melanie. He could see Melanie was right back at work. Sid will be there tomorrow morning. Uh, Matthew, he's doing well. Uh, yes, I've done that. Uh, Jan Thornhill. Uh, Carol Jones, my pink polka dot plant has blossomed little purple flowers. Yeah. They will. Uh, what's neat is I'll take some pictures of even my rosemary. My rosemary that I have indoors has bloomed. It's growing. It's blooming. This is, this is, I'm new to this house. So this is my second winter in this home. I have lots of windows that face south in the back. And with that, I'm amazed at how well some of my indoor plants are growing. And light is, light is the, light gives life. You know, on a sunny day, you know how good you feel when you have some nice sunlight. Mm. Plants feel that too. It's tea. It's not wine. I'm, I'm telling you. Um, uh, so um, just with that, so yeah, indeed. Uh, so here, if you put here, let, let's see what Tanya has to say here. Uh, if you put your plants in the shower, make sure they are in your nursery pot so water can drain out. Very good point. Uh, always Tanya adding a little bit of extra. Tanya somebody who, uh, just if you want to know, she works for Ball. Uh, with that, one of the breeders, she's a fantastic, avid lover of plants overall. What's your handle again, too? It's something like Plant Diva or something like that. Let me know and I'll tell people out there. You will even post it up there. Uh, but we work at my family business together. And actually, uh, the role that when I left... Be to, when I left Bradford to be more involved with breakfast television, Tanya took over my role at the greenhouse. There's a little story for you there. Uh, good evening from New Tech. Uh, can we get wax and rose bulbs to reflower next year at Christmas? What do we have to do after they are finished flowering? So Gloria, so yes, you can. First thing that you have to do is that you really, there you go. There's Tanya's handle right there. It's Bloom Diva. So on Instagram, check that out, Bloom Diva. Um, oh, there you go. Got to get rid of that there too. All these different things all coming all over the place. There we go. Um, so with that wax, 
amaryllis bulb. Let's kind of break it down for you. So the wax amaryllis bulb, you're going to plant it, you grow in it, you enjoy it. That amaryllis bloom, boom, beautiful, nice bloom. After it finished that bloom, we cut the flower stalk off. So when that flower stalk goes a little bit yellow, the bloom is finished, we cut the flower stalk off. From where that stalk is, you'll start to see some leaves that come out. The leaves come out. We let the leaves kind of grow. We actually, when those leaves are growing, we water it, we nourish, we give a little bit of plant food as well, like a water-soluble miracle grow. That builds energy back in the bulb. When those leaves start to turn yellow again, uh, that's when they're done. So then we're going to remove those leaves off, and that can be well into the month of May. When we we'll remove the leaves up, we'll lift that bulb up, we'll allow the soil to dry, dust it all off, then we'll take it and put it in a cool, dark, dry space. Ideally, if you had a cantina and or fruit cellar, fantastic. Put it in there. And then in uh, October, late October, early November, pull it out, replant it into a potting soil with some drainage. You need to have drainage. And then that will rebloom. By putting it into that dark, cool space, that's its plunge period, that allows it to rest. And then that those leaves built all that energy back in that will then support the next bloom. So that's exactly what you got to do there. Um, my or orchid bloom for the second time says star, uh, will it bloom again? Yes, indeed. Depends on the variety, but sometimes orchids can bloom several times, even on the flame, the same flower stalk. Dendrobium orchids and Phalaenopsis orchids are ones that are really mostly the ones that will bloom multiple times. Good evening from new tech. Uh, okay. Uh, Jen says good evening as well out there. Here we go from Sonia. So Sonia has another question as well. So Sonia Smith says, do you still need grow lights when using sunny south facing windows in a zone three? You do. Because the reason why, and it's now at this time of the year that we need grow lights. So why do we need grow lights? Because our daylight hours are so short. We know that from late October all the way through to March, we have very short daylight hours. So we don't really have enough daylight and this is dependent upon what you're growing overall. If you do have a lot of south facing windows and you're using seeds on a seed starting schedule and you're doing and you're sowing them at the right time, you can get away with that natural light because the natural light at that time of the year is going to be enough. But if you are ones that are you need that extra space and you're starting to use a tiered system, you gotta remember the top tier will get the most amount of natural light where the bottom tiers may not get as much. So that's where we need to grow light. So grow lights are supplementing daylight hours when we don't have a lot of daylight. So either in a darker room and or if you're trying to grow food at this time of the year in the time when we don't have a lot of daylight hours. So if you're trying to grow lettuce and things like that, if you are starting seeds when it says to, when you're reading the back of the pack, four to six weeks before last frost date, you can just use natural light at that time. And that's what's used at a greenhouse. Most greenhouses don't light any of the greenhouses that you're seeing that are lighting are usually lighting things like petunias and you even see them for cucumbers and things like when you go by let's say if you're driving to niagara and you've seen say david's hydroponics that are there and you're seeing the lights on that's because they're trying to grow cucumbers at this time of the year and there's not enough uh light to support even when you go by some of the cannabis growing uh greenhouses as well you'll see those lights out there and that's the reason why you see the lights out there. So that's a good question for you, Sonia. Thank you for that. Uh, Sharon, I have two hibiscus that I brought inside and seems to be very well. Nice green foliage, blossoms, etc. cetera. Uh, I don't have direct sun in the house and my sun parch only has sun till noon. If they're doing well and you have bright light, you don't need direct light. It just needs to be a brightly lit room. They're doing well. And as soon as you start to see things really start to put new foliage on, that's when you want to consider start to fertilize. Uh, there are some plants that I have, and really at this time of the year, because we're still in the month of January, if you're fertilizing maybe only once a month and even only at half strength, then we'll increase that fertilizing when we have more daylight hours. And that's going to happen when we're closer into the month of March itself. Uh, so we got a question here. Oh, there's Tanya. There's Sonia. She's saying, thank you. You're welcome overall. Okay. So over here, uh, Judy. Uh, can I use just fluorescent lights as grow lights? Good question. No, you need a full spectrum. Even if you had a fluorescent light bulb, it has to be a full spectrum light. And the reason why we're looking for that is we're looking for cool light, blue and red light. Just a fluorescent light bulb is not going to do it for you. It's a good question. Um, does sending stars benefit you? This is for Paula Polly. So yeah. So guys, if you're wondering about the sending stars, sending stars is a way that Facebook is helping to support um, 
things like this that I'm doing. Uh, and even though, you know, the, there are some costs. So this, uh, right now I'm using something called Restream, which is a service that we use the camera that I've upgraded, which was a little bit of a cost, the mic that I have, which is a cost overall. And I'm trying to improve these Facebook lives. I'm going to have more things happening. You're going to really see this, not just Facebook lives, but lives overall. I'm going to try to improve them so that this is kind of our, you know, HGTV doesn't really have a garden show. Uh, so this is going to be your way to have a garden show. And so the stars on Facebook do help. If you're watching on Facebook, they do help. It's not a lot, but every little bit does help. And also with Facebook watching, because this is something new, uh, that will actually help me with working with Facebook overall. Uh, I'm streaming tonight on YouTube as well as LinkedIn, uh, as well as Twitter as well. So there's many different ways. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll just see how this uh, just all goes overall. Thank you very much, by the way. Uh, question for the summer, Japanese beetles. I was told uh, traps attack, attract the beetles. I had eight full traps. Yeah, so those traps that you get, those beetle traps for the June bugs and whatnot, there's a pheromone in them. And that pheromone is an attractant. So the whole purpose of that pheromone is it will attract beetles to the trap so the beetles fly in and are there. The other thing that happens, though, is often when people put them on their property, they'll put them where the problem is. No, you want to put them away from that problem area. What will happen is it'll track those be beetles from that problem area over to the trap and trap them. And other beetles will get attracted to that trap as well. So sometimes by putting them all in one space where you're having the problem, you're just going to bring more beetles to the problem. So great question there. So, yeah, when you're using a beetle trap, put it on the far end of your property overall. Uh, that's so good. Frank says, Matthew. Thanks, Matthew, by the way. Uh, Isabel, uh, Frankie, my hibiscus lost all its leaves. Uh, now, not growing back. Should I fertilize it to give it a boost? So, Isabel, uh, no. What I want you to do, if you lost all its leaves, that kind of happens. I want you to cut it all back by at least a third to a half overall. I want you to allow it to dry out in between watering. Go up to the stem as well. And with the stem, I want you to just kind of scratch the bark with your fingernail, or even if you had a nail file, just really lightly. Underneath the bark, if you see that it's still green and or white, it's still living. If you go up to the stems of that hibiscus too, and you go to bend them a bit, if they have, if they bend, great, it's still living. If they start to snap, it's dead. So first thing that we have to do is to make sure it's living. We don't give it fertilizer until there's leaves. There's no need for food of a, on a plant until it's growing. So if your plant has no leaves, it doesn't need it at that time. But once leaves start to go, that's when you're going to want to fertilize overall. HGTV, have you in a garden show? Should, yeah. That's uh, from Carol Jones. I think so too. Jody sent uh, 100 stars as well. Thank you, Jody, as well. Jody's a good friend, by the way. Frankie, my hibiscus lost all its leaves. Uh, we just did that. How would I remove the white spots on my orchid? I need to take a look at what those white spots are. Um, we got to see uh, what's causing the white spots. Uh, on the leaf itself, is, is it something that we can remove? Sometimes al alcohol swabs, if it is a white spot that's caused by an insect, we can just put a little bit of a weak dilution of alcohol and just use a little bit of a cotton swab and wipe them off. But I need to see what it looks like. So Frankie at FrankieFlowers.com. Frankie at FrankieFlowers.com is my email. So you can email me there. Um, boom, 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 boom. Okay, now uh, we're just kind of coming to the end here couple things that I wanted to get through as well. So Frankie Flowers will be live broadcasting on Sunday, this coming Sunday from 9 to 9.30. I'm considering doing another one on Wednesday evening as well, and I may just do that as an Instagram live. I'm going to try to make sure that you guys have as much content and actually as much support to motivate you to get growing this year. What we're working on this for this year as well is Garden to Table. Garden to Table is the whole idea of growing your own food and then preparing your own food. Uh, I'm working on right now developing an online course. That online course will be where you can learn how to grow food in small spaces, particularly troughs. And then also it'll be with a whole bunch of different recipes. I, I got to tell you, I love to cook. I'm by no means a chef, but I do have a lot of friends that are chefs that work with me on CityLine. And there's some people I'm going to lean on for some help as well. So that's something that we're going to be working on. So pay attention to that. You'll be seeing more information on that. And then here we go with this question here too. Hi, how long does it normally take for an orchid bud to open? Great question as well. So um, orchid buds can actually take a very long time to open. To open. 
Orchids will, you know, we got to remember they're, they're native to tropical rainforests. So in order for an orchid to do well, it needs and it would desire to have humidity. So misting your orchid really helps and that will help for that orchid to bloom. Sunlight will actually help that orchid to bloom as well. But they also like air circulation. So they do like a room that does have a little bit of a breeze in it. Um, and then a reminder, a lot of the times people will water because they, they've heard the tip about using two ice cubes per week. That's the volume of water because orchids grow up in the trees in Brazilian air, uh, in tro tropical rainforest, forgive me, in Brazil and all over the world in tropical rainforest, tropical, uh, they don't like cold water. They actually like warm water. There are some native species of orchids, even in Ontario. Check out the toad lily. A toad lily is actually a native orchid. So check that out as well. So there you go. Uh, we're just going to go over here. Jerry, that would be really interesting. Would love an online course. Thank you. Great info as well. Uh, that's great news, Frankie. Thank you. Can't wait uh, for the project. So informative. So, okay, guys, I'm going to end it right there because tomorrow is indeed back to school. My boys are with me. Uh, so we're going to make sure that their lunch bags are good. Got to make sure that Gavin actually has his uniform and that it's nice and clean. Got to make sure that uh, they got all their books in place and also going to have to see what happens in terms of the weather. So for everybody out there, I hope that you guys have a fantastic day. I wonder how we, oh, there we go over there. Uh, I will hope you guys have a fantastic day, a fantastic evening. I hope tomorrow works out for us all. I'll be live on Breakfast Television, 6 a.m. You'll see me broadcasting from Bradford Greenhouse's Bradford location tomorrow morning. Uh, and remember, guys, always gardening. Yeah, gardening is way better than therapy. And why? Because you always get tomatoes at the end. Hey, stay healthy, guys. Peace, love. Happy Sunday night. Just going to see if this.